Hello and a warm welcome to Dakar Weekly. What an opening week it has been. Over the next half hour we'll be bringing you the best of the thrilling action during the first five stages of Dakar 2019. We will also show you the sights, sounds and smells of Peru, the country known as the gastronomic capital of the Americas. With over 5,000 kilometres to cover across 10 stages and 70% of the route over sand, this Dakar promises to be a memorable addition. From Lima, the rally sweeps down the Pacific coast to Pisco, San Juan de Marcona and Arequipa, with the cars opening the piste on day two and a marathon stage across days four and five. The rest day in Arequipa will give the teams a much needed chance to recharge their batteries. There will be loops around San Juan and Pisco, while the 25 fastest bikes, cars and trucks will set off first in the Super Ica on stage eight. The Dakar then heads back to the capital, where the winners will be celebrated. We have a great route with a new format. Ten days of racing, fewer kilometres of special, so the competition is going to be very intense. There will be less time to make a difference in terms of kilometres and days of racing. We can expect a very high level in every category. Let's remind ourselves of the favourites in the bikes. I'm here to fight for it and I want to do a podium again. I'm back and ready to go. We all want to win this big one. Hard work pays off, so hopefully it'll be this year. I hope to have a lot of fun and of course we want to achieve a good result. Enjoy the unexpected and try to give it our all. There's no mental block. KTM's won for years, but it'd be cool to be the first guy to beat KTM in 14 years. In 2018, Carlos Sainz won the cars category for Peugeot. This year, the Spaniard is back, but he's driving a Mini. Two-wheel drive, big suspension. The idea is the same, but the car is different. Cyril Depre and Stefan Petterhansel have followed signs from Peugeot to Mini. There's opposition everywhere, inside the team and out. We have to be wary of everybody and be perfect. Toyota are chasing a first win. I will go maximum attack. Well, the target has to be to win. And Loeb is also back. My ambition is to do my best. We'll give everything. Stage 1 sees a liaison from Lima to Pisco, followed by a short 84km special, a loop taking in three sections of dunes to launch an incredibly sandy Dakar. Well, nice and easy does it for the defending bikes champion Matthias Vorkner, whose training in December was affected by illness. The Austrian just over three minutes down in seventh place. A strong start from Pablo Quintanilla, who's endured a certain amount of frustration since he came third in 2016. The two-time world champion just 90 seconds off the pace. 
of the stage one victory went to Joanne Pereira, Honda's supercharged Spaniard, bringing him up to 23 Dakar stage wins. Bang Bang Pereira sending out a message to his rivals. Now Sebastian Loeb is competing in the Dakar for the fourth consecutive year. The nine-time World Rally Champion first took part in 2016. Along with his co-driver Daniel Elena, he soon discovered that life on the Dakar can be incredibly demanding. And that was in spite of three stage wins in the first year for Team Peugeot. It's been bloody difficult in every sense. The first year we rolled the car, we were in the sand for 38 minutes to go 10 meters in 48 degree heat. I thought we were going to stay there. All the journalists were there taking photos, but of course they couldn't help us. There have been some really tough moments, but at the end of the day you remember the good things and the beautiful scenery. It's a great adventure. It's different, we shout at each other a lot more on the Dakar. In WRC the driver does maybe 98% of the work, co-driver gives him the notes, controls the timing and that's it. In a Dakar the co-driver does at least 50% of the work. There's a verbal exchange between driver and co-driver. Sometimes there are arguments, like when I say go right, he sees tracks to the left and wants to go left. Who's right? Well, it's 50-50 at the time. It's more difficult and demands a greater understanding, but we've found a new and different way of working. There are extraordinary moments, highs and lows, but of course it's enjoyable when you're driving through places where you would never set foot normally if you weren't taking part. It's fantastic. Second in 2017, Loeb was forced to abandon last year on stage 5 after a crash that left Elena injured. This year he returns with private team PH Sport in a souped up version of the 3008 DKR in which he finished runner-up two years ago. Onto the cars and Nasser Alatia dominated the opening stage, not worried that that would mean him opening the way on the much longer stage two. Carlos Sainz, the defending champion, looking at home in the mini, it was second, one minute and 59 seconds down on the Qatari. Well this was the symbolic image of the day, Alatia literally flying past Sainz on the finish line. After the short opener, stage two provides a much sterner challenge. 342 kilometers of special with dunes to be navigated and negotiated. Well, the cars are setting off first this time, and Carlos Sainz following Alatia's tracks over the dunes. The Spaniard set off three minutes after the Qatari and was careful not to overtake the Mini closely following the Toyota to the finish. Danny Roma banished some demons as he steered his four-wheel drive Mini to a tremendous second, this in the zone where he suffered a bad accident last year. Any doubts as to Sebastian Loeb's pace were put to bed as the Frenchman bagged the 11th stage win of his Dakar career, his first as a private entrant. Daniel de Villiers became the overall leader with an advantage of 28 seconds over his Toyota teammate Bernhard Tembrinke. On to stage two in the bikes and despite carrying a nasty wrist injury, 2016 winner Toby Price was only three minutes off the pace. Barreda following up his stage one win with another fine effort, the Spaniard coming third to hold on to his overall lead determined to improve on his best finish of 5th in 2017. 
But it was Matthias Faulkner who took the stage win by just 22 seconds from Honda's Ricky Brabeck. The Austrian getting his fourth stage victory on the Dakar. Eduard Nikolaev made a storming start in his bid to make it a hat-trick of trucks titles. The Russian victorious in both of the opening stages and leading the Kamaz charge. Sergei Vyazovic, runner-up to Nikolaev in 2018, was overly ambitious in his Maz as he attempted to overtake a Kamaz. A spectacular roll and big problems for the Belarusian who lost a bunch of time. A long day on the menu on stage three, 798 kilometers to cover between San Juan de Marcona and Arequipa, including 331 kilometers of special. Well, this stage proved to be the end of the line for Joan Pereira. The Spaniard, a hot favorite, was forced to throw in the town after getting his bike stuck at the bottom of a steep ravine caught out by heavy fog in the mountains. So Honda losing one of their biggest weapons. I just couldn't get out. I tried to go lower to find a way out, but that was even worse. Well, not everybody suffered Bereda's fate, and in fact, parts of stage three gave the favorites a chance to stretch their legs and enjoy themselves. It also threw up some of the standout images of this first week, absolutely breathtaking scenes along the Pacific coast. Kevin Benavides showed that it was by no means game over for Honda despite the loss of Bereda. The Argentine last year's runner-up grabbing third place on stage three and moving up to second overall. But this was the man who topped the rankings at the end of the day, Pablo Quintanilla. The Chilean showing remarkable consistency in these opening stages, finishing second, fifth and second again. An intelligent ride from the Husqvarna man, opening up a gap of 11 minutes and 23 seconds at the top. The stage win went to Yamaha's Xavier de Sultre, a bare margin of just 15 seconds. The Frenchman's first win on the Dakar, he thought he'd won the opener two years ago, only to be given a one-minute penalty for speeding. No such worries here, as he climbed to sixth overall. Now fittingly, heading over Juna Argentina, the Argentines were on form in the third stage in the quads. Gustavo Gallego, third behind his compatriots Jeremias Gonzalez and Nicolas Cavigliasso. 2018 runner-up, winner of the first two stages, Cavigliasso extended his overall lead to half an hour. I think uh, an American winning would for sure make it well more known. It's a uh, it's gotta happen. Ring the bell, it's time to eat these rappers. One He's the new American kid on the Dakar block. Casey Curry shows up on the rally, having tasted all types of off road racing on the American scene. Anything spectacular, anything big, anything flat out, and he's up for it. And now he's tackling the biggest of the lot. Twelve months ago, I would have told you, you're high as a kite, this will never ever happen. I'm just a fan, I love it. I, so I've watched it my whole life, but. Two, mo two months after this, there's a race in Mexico called Sonora Rally. Uh, I gave it a go and that was it. I literally at that moment was like, I am racing the car. As soon as you put the helmet on, it's like, that's the time to go, right? When that's not the time to go. You put the helmet on and then, ah, oh, there's a car right in front of me. You push hard. Don't push hard, don't push hard. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why drive in this dust? Why take a chance? What's on that side of the rise? Everything is so unknown. <laughs> you gotta slow down. You gotta make it happen. My goal is to finish. But I mean, in reality, I'm, I'm here to win. I mean, I, I wanna win. This January, stay connected on Super...